We've gone through the main phases of building an in-house test lab. In this video, we will tell you how to ensure reliability and how to operate your test lab. In order to avoid flaky tests, make sure that there is a proper cleaning cycle between every test session. Uninstall unwanted apps and set the device storage to the original state. Some of the test execution-related failures are not actually related to the app under test, but most likely caused by some test infrastructure-related reasons. You need to be able to automatically verify that both the USB and the Wi-Fi connection are actually transferring data, and if not, you need to automatically get them back up again. When you have hundreds of devices and tens of device control servers in your test lab, you cannot make changes to settings or configurations manually. The risk of not doing the changes identically on all devices or servers is simply too high. Set it up for all aspects of your test lab infrastructure. The most important areas to monitor are disk space, power and network connections, latencies, and packet loss rates. The last tips for operating your test lab. Document all bits and pieces that happen to the environment, devices, and test runs. Keep your devices cool. Even small changes to temperature may cause malfunctioning and result in your device going offline. Make sure your devices are charged. Use a staging environment that can help you to verify even smaller changes in critical environments. Standardize your test lab hardware as much as possible. This is it! I'm hoping that you enjoyed this video series and that it was helpful and gave you a clear idea of how to get started with building your own in-house test lab. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. We are here to help. This was Anastasia and Bits and Bytes. Thank you for watching and see you all next time.